And these are the types of videos that I'm not too excited to make, but I still think the question should be there. How is Tesla going to do exactly this? Clearly a rendering. I don't think the cyber trailer exists yet or anything, but Teslas are notoriously known for not really being great at towing that many things. Sure, the Cybertruck will be technically capable of towing things at very high capacity, but at a significant loss of that range. With the Tesla Model X, it can tow up to 5,000 pounds, but if you just go watch a couple videos of people towing really anything with the Model X, you will know how quickly it consumes power and how that trailer basically throws off the whole delicate balancing act that allows EVs to have a decent range for our daily lives. There's several ideas people have thrown out there for the Cyber Trailer, which I definitely think are worth mentioning. Given for one, we know that Elon's on board with the idea of the Cybertruck having solar panels on the back to hopefully add a little bit to the battery pack every single day. No, it's not going to add a ton, but if they're willing to do it on on the Cybertruck, why not also be willing to do it on the Cyber Trailer? Well, I'm not just here to pitch to you as to why this would be a great idea, because honestly, a lot of the Cyber Trailer ideas I've seen are not completely thought through. Sure, yeah, maybe if there's only one problem in someone's head of, oh, well, Cybertruck can't tow things very well, that trailer throws off the aerodynamics completely, and will probably make the range far worse than advertised. Well, here's the solution. Uh, we'll just throw some battery packs in there, right? Then it can charge the Cybertruck and help the vehicle pull its added payload and problem solved, right? Well, not exactly, because it's a delicate balancing act whether or not you want to throw solar panels on there, throw dedicated power walls in there that you can use as generators out in the field, which would be cool, and contribute to the vehicle's transportation. But keep in mind, one of the most expensive parts of Tesla vehicles is not that exoskeleton, it's not that armored glass, it's not those nice screens on the inside, or even the cameras that allow for autopilot to be possible. It's actually the battery packs. That's one of the most pricey parts of any EV. Trying to figure out how you can maximize the kilowatt hours without breaking the bank is a very complicated process that other automakers are having a very hard time doing. Tesla is currently the best at this and they've invested tons of infrastructure into building their own battery packs so that they could get that part of the vehicle as cheap as possible. So to go ahead and just start throwing more batteries into the trailer itself, sure it may help with towing this thing long term, but that's also going to make a very expensive trailer. So while you're trying to solve the problem of this towing dilemma, you're also making it more difficult and harder to obtain for everyday people because a cyber trailer with the bottom laced with battery packs would be very much more expensive than what most people pay for trailers. And kind of the same thing goes with solar panels. Just like Elon said in his tweet, there will be an option to add solar. It is not a guarantee on every single Cybertruck. And that's probably because solar panels are not known for being particularly cheap. Especially if you want to layer them all on that garage door style cover for the vault. And with all the square footage you have with this cyber trailer going on, even if you want to wrap all of the back and the top and the sides with solar panels, that's going to make the cost go up substantially. And I've even seen some people suggest the idea that you'll have a extra motor built into the cyber trailer to kind of help cover some of that towing capacity. That way you don't lose so much range because these wheels could actually potentially be helping you. And again, decent idea in a closed box. How do we solve the problem? Well, just throw batteries, solar panels, and motors on the thing. But again, that's going to make an insanely expensive trailer that barely anyone's gonna want to buy. So just like there are already so many different learning curves when switching from a gas car to an EV, this would probably be too much for a lot of people out there that need to tow things regularly, that they have to spend an insane amount of money, probably upwards of $10,000, $20,000, just on this trailer because it's stuffed with batteries, motors, and solar panels wrapped around it just so that you can tow things at a decent distance. So personally, I don't think throwing as much tech as possible into a cyber trailer is actually the answer. Probably the better answer, sadly, is just making bigger battery packs and sadly admitting that EVs are not going to be great at what's the best bang for your buck if your primary purpose with a pickup truck is towing capabilities because as I've talked about in the past the Cybertruck is an amazing vehicle. I'm impressed by the range, the price points they're able to hit, the 0 to 60 speed, the payload, the design is so weird and out of the ordinary and I think it checks a lot of boxes but you cannot check every single box when designing a next generation vehicle. You can try but it's not always going to work and this is 
is a big Achilles heel for electric vehicles is, I think, towing, because you're kind of limited by physics and how much energy it actually takes to tow something. And Engineering Explained did a great video showcasing why EVs have such a hard time towing, why they're so inefficient at it, and why when a Model X decides to have a trailer, suddenly the range is cut in half, sometimes even more. In his video, he can break down the math for you. I'm not going to do that in today's vid. I'm just going to simply say that what Tesla's probably trying to combat this with is just extremely better efficiency, trying to make the aerodynamics as good as possible, trying to make the electric motors work as well as they can so that even when that range is drastically compromised, hopefully it won't matter too much because the range will be so good as it is. So if you're part of that demographic that's like, I need to tow things, I tow things all the time, but I'm interested in getting an EV like the Cybertruck, basically your only option is going to be get the triple motor version, which good news, that's coming earlier than expected, end of 2021. So again, it's a good thing Tesla moved that up, but also cutting that 500 mile range in half to 250 miles, while not ideal, could still cover a lot of use cases. That's the thing. When it comes to vehicles, especially towing capabilities, it's hard to cover all of the different things people are going to be using them for. There's some people that probably tow things across the country, but I can think of personal examples in my life where there's a lot of people who tow things, you know, across town. Not that much on big road trips. And that's kind of the good news about this. While I think it's a huge downside to EVs that they can't tow as much as we're used to with gas cars, it's not a huge portion of the automotive market. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. There's definitely people that need to tow stuff all the time, but I'm just saying that there's a lot of pickup truck drivers that hardly ever tow anything. Even if the Cybertruck towing capabilities aren't that great as traditional gas cars, as long as they're able to tow things across town and short distances, they will still probably cover a lot of people's uses, unless of course you're a diehard heavy tower that needs to tow things regularly and on great distances. I would even go as far as to say that maybe the Cybertruck is not going to be good for those things. We'll know more about it as we near its release, but it's also why I have so many more questions about the Tesla semi-truck. We haven't talked about the semi-truck on this channel, but I would like to more because it's supposed to start entering limited production at the end of 2020, while the Model Y is nearly a year ahead of schedule. The Tesla the semi-truck was originally supposed to start production at the end of this year, which it appears to have fallen back into the Tesla stereotype of not quite reaching those deadlines. But the range they advertised for the semi-truck were 500 and 300 miles, but at least on their website, they're not exactly saying how much they're pulling, how much capacity is in the back of those semis while they're towing, and how much that affects the range. I know that the semi-truck probably helps with aerodynamics a lot, being the same shape and general size of those giant containers on the back, but that's probably one of the primary reasons the semi-truck is being delayed. For one, probably requires a huge amount of batteries, and that's going to suck up the supply chain they currently have. And for two, Tesla did not really talk too much about on stage how much of a payload this thing can take and how much that affects the range of the semi-truck, which is going to be a huge factor for any commercial use. That towing capability, how much weight they can store behind them, that's going to influence a lot of people's decision in the fact that Tesla didn't want to talk about what the weight of the semi-truck actually is and how the range is affected by the larger payload, that probably doesn't mean good news. If it's going to be really great and really efficient at hauling massive amounts of cargo, they probably would have brought that up on stage, and they didn't. So my guess is behind the scenes, they're still trying to work on that and try to make it as good as possible so that even when you're loaded up to the brim with cargo, the range will probably get affected by that, but hopefully the base range, the one that you get when you're not towing anything, will be good enough that even when condensed down, it can still cover a lot of people's uses. Believe me, I'm all about, yeah, let's throw some battery packs in there and solar panels in there, but it would probably end up costing a fortune, so I don't think that's the easy solution at the end of the day, and I think probably what Tesla's going to try to do is just stuff as much efficient range as they can into the Cybertruck, probably get it more than a 500 mile range, so that when you're towing something of very high capacity, you know, the 200 plus miles of range you get will cover most people's uses, but for sure I completely admit and I completely agree there's a ton of people that want to be able to tow things great distances and having to recharge the Cybertruck ever so often is just not going to work for a ton of people. The whole purpose of Tesla is to accelerate our dependence on renewable energy and they're doing the best they can 
I know that there's some inherent issues with electric vehicles when it comes to towing stuff, but that doesn't mean it's not worth trying. That doesn't mean it's not worth investigating. So I'm still glad that despite EVs not really being that great at towing, Tesla is still showcasing the renders and showcasing it's possible because they want people to know that that's in their future. They're keeping that in mind. And while they may not be great at it, there's still a huge majority of people that hardly tow anything in their lives. And basically what Tesla's job is with their automotive department, I know they're focused on power walls and solar and all that as well, but when it comes to making vehicles that people want to buy, just try to make vehicles that can apply to the most amount of situations possible. I know that can apply to all situations. You'll probably never make a car that can just objectively beat every other car in every department and be cheaper, but the best thing a company can do is just do their best to cover the majority of users, and I still think the Cybertruck achieves that, even if it doesn't quite satisfy the needs for people who need to tow over great distances. And to be fair, when you're towing huge capacities, your gas mileage isn't very good either. So still somewhat of a problem with gas cars. I understand less so because the amount of kilowatt hours you can actually get out of a giant gas tank far exceeds what they're able to pack in lithium, but still, most of us aren't towing things. So I still think the Cybertruck is okay to exist, and I hope that Tesla continues to try to make the range better, especially when towing high capacities. Let me know what you guys think on this subject. Do you think the answer is building batteries and solar panels into the back of the trailer and maybe even a motor to help carry that weight? Or do you think the solution is just pack as much energy and as much range as you can into the actual vehicle so that when that range is compromised by the trailer, you can still go a pretty great distance. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.